I'd like to thank you for joining me for this uh, section talking about using life insurance to fund the buy-sell agreement. I think this is an area that we, you know, kind of gets overlooked in the buy-sell uh, planning. And if you start looking at how do we, you know, utilize life insurance and why do we use life insurance? I think part of the big, big issue here is when we get into the discussion of how are we going to pay for a departing partner? How is that going to be, you know, basically this is where the cash flow is going to be leaving either the business or it's going to be paid out by the surviving partner. Whatever that is, we need to make sure that we're using the cash in, in the best way possible. Part of the problem that we come across is, you know, we really don't have a crystal ball. So the buy-sell agreement could be triggered today, could be triggered 20, 30 years from now. Whatever that is and whenever that timing happens, um, we could really get different answers on what the best method would be for funding the buy-sell agreement. But we don't have that crystal ball, so we have to you know, be you know, forward thinking and have options. But I think it's one we need to make sure that our, our clients are aware of what these options are. If you start looking at the, the typical way to fund a buy-sell agreement is installment payments. I think every buy-sell agreement I read, you know, uh, installment payments are a big part of that. Clients are always asking, can we create some things that are tax deductible? Well, yes, we can use consulting agreements. It's deductible to the business, but that departing partner now has to pick that up as ordinary income as that money's received. And finally, we have life insurance. Now, the, the big elephant in the room is always, is life insurance too expensive? And if you really start looking at what life insurance can do, I think the answer is no, it's a great way to leverage um, those payments that are going to happen in the future. And I think the best way to do this is let's go through a case study. So if we have two equal partners, Bob and Sally, you know, Bob 40, Sally's 50, uh, each own 50% of this company, it's, it's worth $2 million. And, it ha and the current tax rate we'll just use for Bob and Sally's 40%. So let's start looking at what are the payment options for, for Bob and Sally if the buy-sell gets triggered. And so the first part of the case study, let's look if there's no life insurance and we go back to our default of using installment payments. Those installment payments are going to be paid out monthly over 120 months or 10 years, 7% interest. And so let's start looking at that. And so Bob is going to end up buying Sally out. And if we are doing this over 120 months, Bob has to earn $16,255 per, per month or $195,000 and change per year. Over a 10-year period, Bob has to earn $1.95 million. And, and why is that the case? Well, Bob has to pay taxes first at 40% in order to be able to pay Sally or Sally's heirs um, the $1 million plus interest. So if you look at that, Total, total interest and principal is going to you know, cost 1.39 million, but to get that, Bob has to earn 1.95 million from the business. So you start looking at that and one, can Bob generate that kind of money? And two, can the business generate that kind of cash flow and still support Bob? Remember, Sally was 50% you know, owner, probably taking on 50% of the, of the responsibility. So that could be troubling for, for Bob to do that. Let's look at it if we're using life insurance and we're going to use a policy design here. So we've got a million dollars of death benefit for each partner. We're gonna pay 20,000 per year in annual premiums for each of the policies. The policies are designed to build cash value. So now let's look at what happens if, if Sally were to die. If Sally died at age 50, so we're in year one of the policy, well, it cost us $20,000 in, in that first year premium to generate that $1 million death benefit, not bad leverage. But let's look at it, you know, if Sally lives to age 55, um, we've paid five years of premium or 100,000 out of pocket to cover that million dollar of death benefit. 
if Sally goes to age 60, this, you know, we were setting this policy up for, for 10 premium payments and that 10 premium payments would guarantee our 1 million of death benefit. So if we have that, you know, at, at Sally at age 65, we've got the million dollars of death benefit, but it only cost us 200,000 in premium. So the question is, is it affordable? Is the life insurance too expensive? I think you can start looking at the, the leverage that is here. But we also know that there's other things that are going to happen in this case. Um, and because most of the triggers of, of a buy-sell agreement, if you think about it, are death. The next one's disability. And so if we start looking at that, this policy on Sally would have a terminal illness benefit. So if Sally's going to die within the next two years because of a terminal illness, we can take a lump sum payment of 854,000 and change, or we can trigger chronic illness, which is similar to the long-term care benefits of 12,616 per month. Doesn't pay all of the payments that Bob would have to do, but it really starts to make sure that we have more options to cover those triggering events in the buy-sell agreement. Same thing with critical illness. We can take a lump sum out of this particular policy or for critical injury. There again, can we leverage what needs to be paid from, from Bob to buy Sally out when that buy-sell agreement is triggered? Now, we've covered death, we've covered disability. What if Sally just retires? Everything works out, Sally, Sally decides to retire at age 65. Well, we can look at the cash value that's built up in Sally's policy and she's got cash value of 277,000 and change. We can borrow or withdraw that from Sally's policy. But remember, we also have Bob's policy and in Bob's policy, there's because of his younger age, there's 332,000 and change of projected cash value. Bob can reach in and borrow that money out and now take those two and pay Sally you know, as a down payment for, for the buyout agreement. And Bob would still have another 389,502 left to pay her. But now we, we put that into the installment payments. Bob has 4,522 left per month. That is significantly less than, than what he was looking at if he hadn't put the life insurance in place. So if you start looking at um, how do we recap this? Well, one, what is best for the business, both from a current cash flow standpoint and a future cash flow standpoint? You know, can the business sustain what needs to be taken out in an installment agreement? Or would it be better for the business and the owners to go ahead and purchase some life insurance and use that life insurance, one, if there's a death, to be able to pay out that, that partner or in essence, the partner's heirs immediately, or we can create that, as in essence, sinking fund with the cash value to be able to pay that out and create more opportunity for the, for the surviving partner or and the business to be able to grow, replace the departing partner, and have the cash flow they need to carry forward. So it really is one when you start looking at the, at the, funding of the buy-sell agreement, look at how life insurance can be a great asset to leverage those dollars. Appreciate you taking the time and we'll talk to you in the next, next segment.